For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. The much publicized clash between Indian and Chinese troops on December 9th at a place called Yangtze in Arunachal Pradesh has once again focused attention on the vulnerability of the eastern sector of the India China border. Is Tawang still vulnerable? And why is Tawang such a sensitive issue between India and China? Is the topic of this week's Ask Nitin. I'm Nitin Gokhale. So let's cast our mind back to 1987 when at a place called Sundarang Chu there was a standoff between Indian and Chinese troops that lasted for nearly seven years or go further back to 1962 when the main battle between the PLA and the Indian Army troops took place in the Kameng sector in western Arunachal Pradesh bordering Tibet or further still go back to 1959 when His Holiness the Dalai Lama entered India into Arunachal Pradesh what was then known as NEFA or Northeast Frontier Agency from a place called Khinzamane north of Tawang. So Tawang has a history and has a very checkered history. It has a monastery one of the oldest and the biggest Buddhist monasteries in this part of the world. It was part of the Tibet Kingdom up to 1951 when India and specifically Major Bob Cutting with his Assam Rifles troops went and took control of Tawang in that year in February 1951 to bring the Tawang tract and part of that NEFA which was Northeast Frontier Agency into or under Indian control. Since then, Tawang has been one of the more sensitive places, sensitive locations in negotiations between Indian and Chinese negotiators, diplomats, military uh, personnel and military leaders. Why is that? That's because one of the holiest places uh, apart from the monastery is the Gyatse waterfall near Yangtze where the December 9 uh, clash took place between India and China. It is considered one of the holiest places by the Tibetans who want to come to Gyatse which is uh, actually under the supervision or under the gaze of the Indian soldiers from the ridge line at Yangtze. Ever since the Sundarang Chu uh, standoff that I spoke about in the mid 80s between Indian and Chinese troops took place it was essentially Indian domination of this sector at Yangtze and around has uh, really rattled the Chinese and constantly, uh, not just uh, that time but also during the Kargil crisis in uh, the summer of 1999, the Chinese have been trying to wrest control uh, of the Yangtze plateau which includes the Gyatse waterfall uh, which I mentioned briefly. Now, India has a very strong position, a position which is uh, in the higher reaches of that ridge line and therefore uh, in a position where uh, watch can be kept, a very strict watch can be kept on Chinese movements from the valley coming up to the Yangtze plateau. And the Chinese have been trying forever to gain control of this plateau so that they can in turn peep into uh, the other side towards the Sela Pass uh, in India or Sela Pass near Bomdila, which leads to Tawang, the single road that connects the plains of Assam from uh, Bhalukpung or Tejpur to Tawang via Bomdila, uh, Sela and then coming further to the Jung Falls where the uh, line of uh, the, uh, the supply lines are actually maintained uh, through this road. Although in the past 10 years or so, uh, an alternate route uh, which is called OKSRT, the Orang, Kalatang, uh, Sepa, uh, Rupa and Tenga route has come up close to the Bhutan border. The, the fact is the main artery connecting Tawang to Tejpur goes through Sela 
and that entire road comes under observation from the Yangtze Plateau. Therefore, Yangtze is important and therefore Tawang, which is the uh, temporal seat of the Buddhist in Arunachal Pradesh in many ways. The Monpas, of course, dominate uh, the area in uh, Tawang or the, uh, the district of Tawang. The current Chief Minister of Arunachal Pradesh, uh, Pema Khandu, uh, comes from uh, the Tawang district. In fact, his constituency is very close to Yangtze. His father, uh, also a former Chief Minister who died in an air crash uh, in Tawang, in a helicopter crash, also, of course, was a native of Tawang. Uh, but more than anything else, Tawang, as I said, is revered by the Buddhist, by the Tibetans, by the Monpas, and uh, a number of times Tawang has featured in discussions between Indian and Chinese negotiators. Uh, at some point, the Chinese have also mentioned that uh, South Tibet is important for them because it's important for the Tibetans under the Chinese occupation, living in Lhasa and elsewhere, and therefore they want to rest control, which is, of course, a very specious argument, but uh, the fact is, Tawang remains a very sensitive location. So, what has India done to protect this sensitive location? From the mid 80s, the Indian uh, military or the Indian army has actually beefed up the security of the Tawang tract or the Tawang sector continuously. Earlier, there used to be one division, uh, the division located in Teng Tenga looking after the entire Tawang frontier, both uh, east and west of the town, east and west of the road. Uh, and one brigade based in uh, Tawang used to look after the entire uh, sector or the stretch. From the uh, 2000s and uh, subsequently from 2012 for the last decade or so, one more division has been inducted and based in the plains of Assam, on the foothills of the uh, uh, lower Himalayas or the western Himalayas at Misamari. And uh, that division now and brigades under that division look after part of the uh, Tawang, the old comprehensive Tawang sector. So between the division at Tenga and the division at uh, Misamari, the entire West Kaming district uh, or the West Kaming sector has been taken care of. So instead of one division earlier, you now have uh, two divisions looking after the security of the Tawang tract or the Tawang sector. There is also the backup of the 21 division based in Rangia, which uh, has uh, dual tasking of uh, counterinsurgency in Assam, uh, looking after the Bhutan border uh, with uh, Assam and uh, if need be, uh, can be inducted into the uh, West Kaming sector uh, or the Kaming sector whenever required. So the security has been beefed up tremendously in this sector because this was the place in which the Chinese overran the Indian military uh, in a very uh, brutal manner. The first shot uh, was fired at Thagla Ridge and at Hatungla in uh, 1962 uh, to be precise on 20th October 1962 and of course simultaneously raids were launched in Ladakh at Galwan and other places. But uh, the setback for the Indian army uh, in 1962 was mainly in the Tawang sector where the army kept retreating, kept falling back and finally uh, was pushed down to the plains of Tejpur. The Chinese troops reached up to Bhalukpung but then retreated uh, hastily because they couldn't sustain the supply lines and uh, sort of withdrew uh, unilaterally on 20th November 1962 uh, back to their positions beyond the Bumla Pass through which they came in. Uh, in 1962, pushing back the Indian army down to the plains of Tejpur. Since then, the sector in the Indian mind, Indian uh, minds of the Indian national security planners and uh, the Indian military has been uh, very high, the sensitivity about Tawang. And therefore, as I said, security has been beefed up. The weather there is uh, extremely unpredictable. And uh, the, the fact is that uh, Helicopters cannot fly there with any guarantee because the weather packs up, the monsoons are very active, the rains are very heavy and the fog is a killer. Uh, in this sector, the roads also used to be very, very, very preliminary, very primitive uh, modes of transport had to be used. 
a uh, lot of um, uh, mules had to be used to carry loads uh, onto the forward bases uh, along Yangtze, um, Mago, Chuna, uh, Kinzamane, Lungpo. And you talk about these places, uh, the deployment was not easy and the sustenance was uh, more difficult. But over the years, especially over the last decade or so, many roads have been built. Many roads have been uh, extended to the forward bases. Supply lines uh, go right up to the uh, posts uh, along the LAC, the line of actual control, or the McMahon line as it is called in this sector. And uh, one of the setbacks that the Chinese uh, still uh, sort of are angry about is the control of the Yangtze Ridge Line. So the answer to the question that why Yangtze has been provided in a piece written by one of the former corps commanders of uh, four corps in Tejpur, Lieutenant General Chantanu Dayal uh, wrote a piece for us, uh, for our sister concern Bharatshakti.in uh, just about a fortnight ago, uh, just after the 9th December clash, uh, where he has explained beautifully why Yangtze. And uh, therefore, I don't want to waste your time. Uh, please do read that piece and see uh, why Yangtze is important. I have explained it briefly, of course, in the beginning of this program. But apart from Yangtze, there is uh, the fact that, uh, yeah, apart from the Yangtze clash, there is a fact that many of these uh, dual use villages are uh, coming up along that uh, border where uh, the Chinese troops uh, can actually use those villages for launching attacks. And India's uh, stand has been that uh, these villages are not meant for civilians in, uh, in Tibet, but meant mainly for uh, use by the military. And therefore, it's a strategic challenge. India, of course, has to improve uh, its uh, infrastructure much beyond what it is uh, right now in that sector and elsewhere along the uh, Chinese border. The but the fact is, Tawang remains the focal point of any uh, negotiation, any uh, discussion between Indian and Chinese sides, precisely because of the reasons that I have already explained. So, what should India do? Well, India will have to double its efforts in keeping the vigil. It will have to also make sure that all the roads uh, which are difficult to build on the Indian side because of the steep gradient that the uh, engineers and construction workers have to climb and also that the road has to be maintained. All that uh, will remain a challenge but India has to redouble those efforts and also get the Sela Pass uh, tunnel which is under construction going which will give all weather, all year round connectivity between Tejpur and Tawang. And uh, just one road will not do. Although I mentioned that OKSRT OK road is now active and open for traffic. Uh, that needs to be strengthened and maintained throughout the year so that India is not vulnerable uh, and dependent only on one road from Tejpur to Tawang, uh, which is uh, what it has been for a number of years. The Chinese, of course, will uh, like nothing better than ga gaining control of Tawang if there is a hot war somewhere, because it is a prize that they have been waiting for for quite some time, having occupied uh, Tawang in the uh, aftermath of the 1962 war uh, and also then vacated as they withdrew unilaterally. Uh, that area remains uh, a prize catch for the Chinese and India has to make sure they, do, they don't get that prize uh, at whatever cost. So therefore, uh, Tawang remains the focal point and deployment around Tawang remains the priority for the Indian Army. So far, it is in an advantageous position, it is in a dominant position in Tawang. That position must be maintained because if Tawang uh, was to be attacked or Tawang was to come under siege, the next defensive line is at Sela. And therefore, uh, there are many implications to this kind of a uh, situation uh, if there is a major conflict between India and China. But we'll talk about that in some other episode. Uh, and of course, um, also bring to you maybe ground reports from that area whenever possible. Uh, I have been there a number of times uh, since, since I was stationed in Guwahati for a number of years. But a fresh look is perhaps uh, warranted now. But when will that happen? Uh, one will have to see. But for the time being, uh, this is what I had to flag for you that why Tawang is important, why Tawang is sensitive. Of course, there are questions from um, our viewers. 
on this program and I'll take those questions one by one as I go along. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, many people do not want to come on the uh, on the video or on the on the screen. But there are these written questions that have come to us this time, three of them in fact. There is, uh, let me see, the first one is from somebody called Trixoli. And uh, the question is slightly confounding for me, but let me read out that question and attempt an answer. It says, can thank the Dino dictator for flare up in clashes with their agents in India peddling the narratives of PLA being the stronger than, PLA the stronger than reality. Well, what basically this uh, viewer is saying is that uh, there is a double attack on India. One is of course the uh, clash or the provocation that was uh, undertaken by the Chinese in Yangtze, the physical provocation against Indian troops. And the second is that disinformation campaign launched by uh, the Chinese using India's open society, open media, uh, free media to uh, peddle the narrative that PLA is now a very strong military force, um, maybe their soldiers are 7 and 10 feet tall, all that again they are trying to peddle. But uh, the fact is disinformation has a very limited life. Uh, everybody now knows that India is in a very strong position, uh, along strong defensive position, let me clarify this, uh, all along the LAC with uh, Tibet. Uh, and therefore, one need not fear too much about uh, what's happening. These skirmishes will go on, uh, they will only increase because India is also now becoming more and more assertive. That's my answer to the first question. The second question is by Nirod Chaki. Um, and the question is or the statement is, Salami slice method adopted by China in capturing the territory of its neighboring countries is well known to India and to all countries. Then is it not possible for India to enter Chinese territory and capture a salami slice? It is difficult, but that approach has to be adopted by India sooner or later. Well, uh, Nirod, I think uh, this has been uh, talked about at a number of uh, times uh, on television, in uh, media, during discussions. The fact is, uh, there, there exists what is called a QPQ option with every Indian Army formation. QPQ is quid pro quo, that if China comes and occupies or attempts to occupy one position along or one section of the border, uh, or the uh, uh, the area between uh, or along the LSC, then there is an option for India to go and occupy some of those uh, unheld positions which will be disadvantageous to the Chinese. But all that is meant for uh, what is called the hot war or implications of the hot war. Uh, if there is a uh, you know a real conflict that happens where there is a clash of arms, then these options are exercised. So don't be despondent, there is no reason for you to believe that China has come and occupied Indian uh, land or Indian positions in uh, Yangtze or in, in Tawang. Uh, all, they have driven away as you were aware uh, and there was a big clash but the Chinese were prevented from arresting control of the Yangtze plateau or the Yangtze peak and therefore uh, there is no such, uh, you sh there should be no such apprehension about the uh, Chinese occupation of any land in India. The third question uh, is from Vineet Alurkar and this is a question. Do you think uh, there is a long term strategy in dealing with these repeated incursions by China or are we stuck in policy paralysis? Is there a serious rethink on part of army and the government or are we a default resigned to reacting every time China decides to poke us? Very uh, relevant question. Uh, see, the fact is that uh, most of the Indian proactive uh, incidents or proactive operations do not get reported. All of us have this impression that India is reacting to Chinese provocation, Chinese moves and uh, therefore only responding whenever there is a provocation uh, is because uh, by its very nature media reports only attempts by the Chinese to in, uh, do incursions or come into Indian territory, do ingress. The reality is that India also does a lot of these uh, operations which keep the Chinese on tenter hooks, keeps the Chinese at bay, but those never get reported because that's not Indian Army's nature to come and you know speak about it publicly. So therefore, rest assured that uh, the security along the McMahon line or the LAC 
uh, is completely under control. The Chinese will try, as I said uh, in earlier programs, uh, attempt to try and uh, change the status quo on the LAC. But uh, because of heavy deployment and constantly improving vigil, the ISR capability, that is the intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance capability, the uh, attempts and repeated attempts uh, such as these on uh, such as what happened in Yangtze will be prevented, will be foiled. So rest assured on that count. So uh, very relevant question and uh, I must uh, thank all of you for uh, being such a cooperative and engaging audience all along in this uh, Ask Nitin uh, program. But I have an announcement to make that uh, from January uh, 2023, in the new year, we'll have a new beginning or rather a new beginning for an old program called uh, Simply Nitin. Uh, only because uh, Ask Nitin was meant to be a forum for you to come on screen and uh, interact with me on a live program. But since many of you are shy, many of you are not willing to show your face on the screen in a live program, I have decided to go back to the old format and the old name uh, where you supported us hugely, uh, made it uh, a very uh, you know, must watch program and therefore I am going back to uh, the name uh, called Simply Nitin uh, every Saturday at 7 p.m. on Strat News Global YouTube channel. So do watch uh, that program that time. I, of course, before signing off, I want to uh, talk about some of the books that you must read if you want to know more about Tawang and uh, the importance of Tawang. One is, of course, uh, former Foreign Secretary Nirupama Rao's uh, program, uh, The Fractured Himalaya, uh, which uh, she has published uh, earlier this year. And then there is uh, there are two books which I am showing only one of them, India's China War, written by an Australian journalist Neville Maxwell largely based on leaked documents of the or the leaked portions of the uh, Henderson Brooks Bhagat, uh, General Bhagat report on the aftermath of the or the uh, causes for the 1962 conflict. And there is a book by Brigadier John Dalvi uh, called Himalayan Blunder, who took the John Dalvi was the brigadier commanding the brigade, 7th brigade in uh, Tawang in 1962, who took the brunt of the first attack and was uh, taken prisoner by the Chinese in 1962. That is there. There are a number of other books people have written. So do uh, read these books. They give you uh, a peep into the history, the causes, the consequences of what happened in the 1950s, late 1950s, early 1960s. And some of them later written by somebody like Arjun Subramaniam uh, on full spectrum war, on uh, India's wars. Uh, all these books are useful for you to read and get a sense of the geography, sense of the history, sense of the uh, operations of the Indian Army and the deployment and the role of the or the uh, non-deployment of the Indian Air Force in 1962 and so many other aspects of that uh, particular region and the war uh, that took place uh, 60 years ago. This has been a great year in many ways for Strat News Global for me personally. Uh, it's been um, wonderful journey despite some of the setbacks. So I uh, wish and this is going to be the last program of the year. So let me wish all of you Merry Christmas and uh, a happy uh, new year for 2023. May you prosper, may you uh, get you know all your wishes uh, fulfilled in the uh, new year. But till we meet again in the uh, first week of January, it's goodbye from me. Thank you for being here.